This video is an impromptu water spritzer review. I think that was good. Now you've seen this thing a hundred times. You have seen me spritz my plants. You've seen me spritz my terrariums. And you've even seen me spritz my tubs. The point is that this spritzer is a tool that I use almost every day in the, uh, in the plant room here. And now that it's been a couple months of using this thing, I've got, I've got a bunch of things to say. Some things are bad, some things are good. Most of all, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a fun-filled planty story about a mister. A story about this mister, in fact. Another important part of this story is that this is a Brio Flowmaster. Now, I'm not one to do reviews. I'm not one to give suggestions. There's hundreds of products out there. There's, there's tons and tons of choices. Different colors, different sizes, different shapes different everything. So if people ask me for advice on a certain product, I like to kind of guide them in the right direction to point them to point them where they can find all of their choices. And then, you know, they can they can do their own research or whatever process they use to, to come up to a final decision. Well, this sprayer is the sprayer that I came to a final decision a few months back. And it was working wonderful for, for the longest of times. But after only a few short months, strange things started happening to the mister. Strange things such as when you let go of this trigger, it wouldn't quite stop and it would just keep spraying like that. Other quite annoying things are how water spills out of the handle when you tip it back. I don't know if you caught that, but water just went all over my foot down there. Jeez Louise, what the heck is going on with this sprayer? It's only been a few months. And that was my sentiments exactly about this sprayer. It's only been a few months. How can this Brio Flowmaster by Hudson sprayer be, be malfunctioning already? So I did what every egocentric consumer does. I went back to Amazon where I purchased this mister. I looked at the receipt. I got in touch with the company. I wrote them a medium email that said something along the lines of, I love your mister, but I've had it for only a few months and uh, in, it's malfunctioning. It won't stop spraying. There's water spurting all over my hand. It's getting my shoes dirty. First, it took about a week for them to actually get back to my email. Second, they told me that they would be happy to help me, but they'd need like about 12 different things and I was going to have to pay for shipping and handling back and forth to not only ship the old uh, spritzer back to them, but also get the new one. They wanted receipts. They wanted order numbers. They couldn't look everything up. It was just, it was going to be a hassle. And knowing that I had only paid $12 for this thing, one of the reasons that I chose this spritzer in the first place was not only how, how awesome it looks, it's not only all of the great things I'm about to tell you about this spritzer, but uh, it was the fact that it was only $12. And because it was $12, it just wasn't worth it for me to go through all that hassle, sending them all that documentation, paying for shipping back and forth, probably paying more for what this thing actually costs in the first place just to get a replacement. So again, I did what every egocentric consumer does. I, uh, I, I wrote them back and said, thanks, but no thanks. I, I, it's not worth my time to, to do all that sort of stuff. I got on Amazon with my happy little fingers and I wrote a, a mediocre three-star review saying that I've used it for only a few months and I love it but, it, but it's broken down. And as I promised the company in my email back to them, I purchased another product that wasn't theirs. It was, it was a competitor. See, my egocentric mind thought, well, at this point, I'll convince them if I tell them that I'm gonna buy another, <laughs> I'm gonna buy a competitor's product. But guess what, my friends, in today's world, they didn't care. They said, you know, thanks for letting me know, but go ahead and purchase the other, the other competitor's product. And I know why they said that now. It's, it's all clued in. Take a nice up close look at this spritzer. It's just a regular spritzer. The name doesn't even matter. It's pretty generic. It's one of, you know, a thousand different types of spritzers that look almost exactly like this on Amazon. This particular spritzer cost $20. And when I got this thing in the mail, I was so excited until I actually used it. And it sucks. It sucks because it feels cheap in your hands. This feels like it's about to break off every time I pump it. And um, you know, overall it just, it doesn't feel, it, it mists, but it doesn't feel like a good quality spritzer. Even the spray nozzle on the end there, it would put out like a really, a, a, a lot harsher of a spritz than, than this actually would. This puts out like a nice fine mist and you can adjust it and everything like that. This one is adjustable as well. But, you know, even down on the finest level, the spritz that this thing puts out is just a little, it's wild and unconcentrated and it's just not, it's not detailed. And that is transitioning me back into what I actually love about this Brio Flowmaster spritzer. Because in the end, the story ends with my tail between my legs. I went back to Amazon for a second time. I didn't bother contacting the company. 
and I purchased another another Brio Flowmaster by Hudson Sprayer. And I guess I'm just gonna have to wait and see if I get a bit of better luck on the next one. But to be honest with you, even if this thing only lasts another three months, for $12, it's almost worth it. It's almost worth it to buy a brand new one every three months because of just the, the quality, the way this thing feels in your hands, the way the trigger feels in your finger, and most importantly, I saved the most important thing for last, the thing that distinguishes this spritzer from every other spritzer, or at least every other spritzer that I could find uh, on Amazon, which is where I was doing my searching. And I hadn't even thought about this when I was purchasing this new replacement spritzer. I, it hadn't even crossed my mind that it was gonna be so important. What looks different between these two spritzers? Okay, if you haven't guessed it yet, I'm gonna give it away. Spoiler alert, but it's this long elephant trunk coming right off of the, uh, coming right off of the nozzle right there. Now, why is that long elephant trunk so important, you ask? Well, say we wanna get, say we wanna get a little moisture on that moss down there under the, uh, the dwarf jade bonsai forest. With the help of our little pointy friend, with the help of our little pointy friend here, we've got an instant concentrated stream. To me, even broken, even broken, this spritzer feels better, performs better. It has this, this elephant nose nozzle that just, it makes it, it makes it almost imperative to use. And I noticed this because as soon as I got my new spritzer here, I went to give my terrarium, which was due for a little soaking, I went to give it a little spritz and suddenly I realized you can't point upside down and you've got almost no, you've got almost no precision with that nozzle in these tight little spaces. I guess I had just taken this elephant nose nozzle for, for granted and hadn't even realized what an important aspect of this spritzer it was. With a nozzle like this, I can get in here right into the back. I can even turn this thing around and I can get in here, give good spritz on the roof up there. It's just overall a better product. It feels more sturdy. It feels like, like a professional piece of equipment. The handle doesn't feel like it's about to bust off every time you, every time you press it. It's even got this fancy spray nozzle in case for some reason you want to let some of the moisture or in case you want to let some of the pressure out of there. But most importantly, as I just described, it's this nozzle right here. And I don't know why more spritzes don't come with them, but this is the cheapest, best feeling, best in your hand, best quality, thickest plastic. I don't even know what more to say about this. I promise you, it's just the best sprayer I've ever found. So it's the Brio Flowmaster by Hudson. And I'll leave you with this. If you don't want this spritzer, despite the fact that, you know, it started leaking and, you know, the trigger wouldn't stop working after three months, if you still don't want this spritzer after all of that, at least, at least, for the love of God, my friends, get one with this elephant nose little nuzzle on there because I didn't realize it at first, but this thing is, you just, you can't spritz without it. You, you can't spritz without it. So let's, let's roll some good music. Let's do a little spritzing to, to end this video. I'll show you all the plants that love a good spritzing in this plant room. This waffle plant right here is always a sucker for a spritzing, as well as this tiny little snow white waffle up there. Our alocasias, ooh, they love a good soaking. And even our fern tree likes to have a little bath on its upper fronds. Ferns, of course. In fact, a lot of the nutrients that this staghorn fern takes is from that air that gets spritzed on it, as is uh, most ferns, but not all. Is that everyone? Is that everyone that likes a spritzing? Well, let's face it, every, every plant likes a spritzing, but some plants, some plants just like, like an extra spritzing. Some plants like to get spritzed more often than others. And uh, those, those are the ones I'm trying to find with you today. I found a couple more over here. Got our, our foxtail fern. Oh, I almost said asparagus fern. That'd be embarrassing. We've got my newest little fern to the collection, my rabbit's foot fern. I've been spraying this quite religiously because I know it likes really high humidity and I just, I love it so much, I don't want it to die on me. Polka dot begonia. It always likes a good misting. 
You know what plant I don't think I've ever even introduced you on this video? I unboxed it without you. I set it up without you. I haven't actually repotted it yet, so I haven't done everything without you. But it's this beautiful spider plant. I may have introduced her before. If I haven't, here she is. And, uh, you know, she doesn't require a spritzin. But I'm sure she won't be too sad with one. Is that the right way to say that? I'm sure she wouldn't be too, I don't know, unhappy about it. However, I, I'm rambling at this point. I'm, I'm spritzing plants. What else am I supposed to say here? And last but not least, our Alocasia Zabrina. Oops. Sorry, Swiss cheese plant. I forgot you like a spritzin too. Jeez. All that water dripping on the floor. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. I got my new spritzer coming in the mail tomorrow and it just can't come soon enough. Cause it's, it, it truly, it truly is annoying. But I do feel bad for kind of telling the company off a little bit. You know what? Flowmaster by Hudson. You make a dang good product. You make the most amazing. It's my, it's my favorite spritzer anyways. And you know what? Just because you fell apart on me doesn't mean I still don't love you. What took you so dang long?